This is a download from BFM 89.9, the business station. Good morning, this is Frida Liu. It's open for business. Yes, I'm speaking to the final two finalists uh, of the Alliance Bank Bismart SME Innovation Challenge. We're just back for the third year and they've got prizes worth up to one million. Uh, the two gentlemen with me today is Ken Wom from Laopo Recipe and Derek To from Wob. So Derek's been here for the, this third time now. So, you know, uh, of course, we're going to hear a little bit about uh, his progress so far and what he's gone through uh, with this competition. Uh, Ken Ken is the only finalist from East Malaysia. Yes. Right. So you are representing us in East Malaysia. So congratulations. Uh, final two, definitely last but not least. Um, you, why, why did you, you know, how did you hear about this competition, uh, Derek? Uh, it's quite interesting. So in 2014, right? Uh, so yes, I'm, I'm Derek from WAP, by the way. So in 2014, uh, I just started a blog for WAP to promote culture. Uh, and uh, my dad actually saw it uh, in, in the papers and he, he said, hey, you should join this SME challenge, right? But I only had like 10 employers at the time and I felt a bit shy. Like, mm-hmm. uh, okay, I don't think I'm SME yet. Okay. Um, but this year I saw, I saw it again, yeah. you know, uh, they were advertising and I thought, oh, I've got like 300 employers now. Okay. I think I'm ready. Okay. I'm SME. So I applied and uh, I got in and it's, uh, I'm, I'm really happy. <laughs> yeah. Ken, Ken is a very interesting story. Before we go into your business, why did you decide to take part in this competition? Or oh, who decided for you? Actually, um, I'm, the, I'm Ken from La Porto Hua. Uh-huh. Uh, thanks to the Alliance Bank in another branch manager because last time actually she wanted to promote me a credit card but end up he pa- uh, she passed me another form that is the Alliance Bank Bismart, Bismart Challenge form. Well, so I, I, I said, okay, if I can win the money, so I, I, I will join this competition. So I just take the form and then fill up my information. That's it. And that's it. So you actually had no idea that you were going to take part in this, but... The yeah, I have no idea. <laughs> I have no uh, idea about that at all. All right. Okay. So, so okay. So, your your business, Derek, uh, uh, d- brief us on what you do. Right. So, um, if you're an employer, uh, you know that your your staff is your biggest asset. And uh, research shows that a lot of employers these days actually struggle to hire and retain Gen mm. Y talent. Right. So, uh, WAP actually um, helps employers attract all these quality Gen Y by uh, building your employer brand uh, and also showcasing your culture right. on a website and a mobile app. So today we've sent uh, close to 20,000 CVs uh, mm. to about 800 employers. Uh, since we launched the app, I think it's about seven, eight months okay. now. So it's uh, growing pretty fast. And uh, we, did, uh, we did a survey of our job seekers recently. And uh, 77% of them who found jobs through us oh. say that they're happy. Uh, they believe they're culture fit and they want to stay right. long term. Right. So yeah. it's the culture fit, right? So yeah. you, your, your company is about a year and a bit. Uh, uh, the app launched seven months, months ago, ago. Uh, but I had the blog uh, sometime uh, in October 2014. Okay, so yeah. that was just a uh, lot. Okay, so just uh, a, oh yeah, just a little over a year. Yes. So and it's very important when you talk about culture fit. Do do companies um, uh, understand this whole idea about a culture fit and how important that is? Uh, that's quite interesting. So yeah, so I, I speak to some companies and they under, like they get it straight. Say, hey, we help you promote your culture, and they understand. Uh, there are some certain companies, perhaps some of the larger ones, where we have to adapt our language a little bit. So okay. instead of saying culture, we use the term. Oh, you know, you can build your employer brand. So they uh, understand what employer brand is now. Okay. It doesn't mean the same thing because employer brand is external right. and then culture is internal. Right. But with a bit of luck, there's some resemblance and we kind of, it's a good starting point and right. we, work for, we work from there. So, and, and with yours, it's like they actually, uh, people looking for jobs, they have a look at the video of what it's like to work in the company and all that. Uh, is it easy to get people to, you know, do the video, the employers to do the video? Uh, I think uh, initially it was quite hard. Yeah. Uh, it was really hard. And um, and I, I also had, uh, I was wondering whether we we're a bit ahead of our time, okay. right? Uh, but we recently had a lot of large organizations approach us okay. to want to join the platform. So we know that the market is actually ready. In fact, you know, it, it, think about this. If you buy a car online now, right? Uh, what do you see? You see a description of the car. Mm. You can see photos that in, of the interior exterior. Mm. You buy the house, it's the same. Yeah. You can see what the house looks like. Yeah. But if you go online to look for a job, you don't see anything. Right. Most of the time, you just see pages and pages of job descriptions. So I think people have been wanting something very different for a while. 
uh, rather, so both job seekers and employers want a different kind of platform and okay. I, and then we are that kind of platform which is great I mean I think it was probably most difficult convincing the first five or first ten then after that I think when people see there's a sample of what it looks like then people are more agreeable to doing these videos yes yes yeah. and, so it's, okay so that's great so with yours okay wh- what is it that you do is Taufufa yeah actually we are supply the healthy organic Taufufa okay. or we call it soya pudding so okay. basically, we are supply our soil building to hotel as they are wedding dessert, mm-hmm. and also our own retail kiosk in the Sabah and Sarawak. Okay. Yeah. So because our product we make by the uh we make by the original bean powder, mm-hmm. and then we are not using the gypsum powder as the traditional one. Okay. So that's uh because we use the jelly powder, so we are more healthy compared to the or, uh traditional one. Okay. So it is organic. It's organic. Okay. So you're the only one there. Yeah, we we not the only one there. Yeah. But we beside the organic, beside the organic bean powder, we also use the remove bean uh remove skin bean powder to make it. Because as we know, the uric acid people actually actually they cannot eat the soya bean mm. or they cannot drink the soya drink. Mm. Because the uric acid people they they cannot they cannot eat the soya without remove the skin. Right. Yeah. Be- that's why we are we we use the remove skin bean to make it so now they can enjoy it. Ah, okay. So and and you your business is how old? Our business just started last year March. Mm. Until now it's one year plus. Okay, why and then you've actually got into quite big. You've got a few, uh, how many outlets or you've got you work with licensees? How many is that? We got eleven city in Sabah and Sarawak, mm-hmm. so including uh KK Kuching, Miri, and others. Main city in the East Malaysia. These are licensees. Yeah, it's a licensee. Con- consider a licensee because we are not franchised. Okay, and they have their own central kitchens. Yeah, because we pack our raw material and then send to, let's say, for example, Kuching. We mm. send our raw material and then I will teach them how to make it in Kuching in their central okay. kitchen. Okay, and why do you think it's been so you know successful? In because it's not it's not Tafuva, it's not something new, but yeah. why do you think it's been so successful? I think because of the unique selling point of our product because mm. the benefit mm. yeah a lot of people they actually they know what is Taufufa basically we we bought the Taufufa in the hawker center mm. when I am children yeah but now we pack our Taufufa make it is an uh, make it into the nice packing okay, and then we packaging. put in the shopping mall mm. to sell it so everywhere you can see the Lao Po Tou Hua mm. that's why it's uh, more convenient to the customer okay and of yeah. course you, you're also selling the fact that it's organic yeah yeah, and because in the same time we promote the benefit of our product, we educate our customer to eat this kind of modern tafufa. Mod- okay. Now, I know, just looking at your businesses, right? I mean, like if you look at how to sustain uh, your business in the next couple of years, you know, what what are some of your plans uh, in terms of growing your business? Right. So uh, yeah. So uh, just direct from what again. Mm-hmm. Um, I think in the short term, uh, we'll definitely look uh, in Malaysia. The market is still, uh, there's a lot of the, of the market that we haven't covered yet. Yeah. Uh, so we want to grow here. So we, we're going to start building some processes and some operations mm-hmm. to, to help us scale. Uh, but we're also looking regionally at the moment. Like uh, we're looking at four countries, Thailand, Indonesia, Singapore, and uh, Hong Kong. Mm. We haven't quite decided which one we will launch at yet, or we might even launch in all four mm. places. Because uh, in Malaysia, we launched the app seven months ago, right. and you know we've grown really fast since then. So I, I'm actually thinking, if I launch in these countries, say, in one or two months from now, by about mid-next year, uh, we're probably in the state where we can aggressively grow the okay. operations there. Have you got funding elsewhere? Uh, we've been funded by angels. Okay. Uh, fairly recently. Fairly recently yeah. as well. Uh, and for you, what, how are your plans to expand? Come to West Malaysia. You're not available in West Malaysia yet. Yeah, not sure. Currently, we're only in East Malaysia, mm. but soon we will expand our business into West Malaysia. Okay, but yeah. as it is in East Malaysia, there's still places to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of places to grow. Yes, because uh, at the moment, we want to develop more soya-based product like mm. the soya drink and the soya ice cream. Mm. So because we want to capture different customer segment. So we want to make our pro, uh, our brand is not only Taufufa, right. but besides Taufufa, we it's still got another product. Soya, yeah. Other soya products yes, as well. Yes, yes, correct, correct. Okay, so we'll talk a little bit about uh, the training that you both have gone through um, and what you've learned so far. I'm here with uh, Ken Wong from La Po Recipe and Director from WOB, and uh, this is Open for Business, BFM 89.9. Bodacious, fabulous minds, BFM 89.9.
89.9. Good morning. This is Frida Liu. It's open for business. I'm speaking to the final two finalists uh, of the 20 that made it for the Lions Bank Bismart SME Innovation Challenge, which is back for the third year. I've got Ken Wong from Lao Po Recipe. There's an, what's the name in Mandarin again? It's a Lao Po To Hua. A Lao Po To Hua. Okay. And a Derek To from Wob Wob. Uh, is, she reminded me, working on bean bags. Um, so, you know, you, you guys were just explaining a little bit about your business. Um, and I, I, so working on bean bags is a company that helps people, employees, look for the right company they work with by understanding the culture that the companies they're applying for in a nutshell. Uh, Lao Po Recipe, Tao Fu Fa. Right? Not Tao Fu Fa, it's not. It's Tao Fu Pudding. It's a... Uh Consider Tao Fu Fa, but, but, but uh, they look like the pudding. Ah. That's why we call it soya pudding also. Right, okay. And of course, he's going to branch out into other soya products in the future as well. So next week is when uh, it's going to be what? The top six? Uh, we uh, so I'm I'm there from Bob. Uh, we do our pitch tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, actually, yeah, okay. all, all 20 of us. Okay. So it's pretty exciting. So then you all will know when. When will you all you'll get the results then and there who will make it? Um, I, I, I don't, th- I don't think so. It'd be, quite, think so. it'd be quite traumatizing if they tell us, <laughs> oh, sorry, you didn't get it and you can go now, right? <laughs> Probably okay. a few days, I okay, hope. Okay, okay, yeah. so this all accumulating, the marks are all accumulating <laughs> as we speak, how you perform in class as well. So yeah. I know you've gone for some uh, coaching in uh, the last couple of weeks. There's, I know there's talent management, uh, strategic influencing in the CEO chat room. Uh, most recently, what was that? The growth wheel and the presentation knockout, right? So uh, Derek, what, what did you get out of those uh, uh, lessons? Um, okay, so with, with the growth, uh, growth wheel, uh, so Chris was our uh, mentor trainer then. So it, it's about uh, business plans and things like that. And um, uh, the way he trained was quite interesting because instead of just telling us, uh, giving us information, he asked us a lot of questions, very insightful questions. Uh, one in particular kind of stuck with me because mm. he actually asked us, what, um, you know, uh, would you sacrifice your family for your business? Mm. Right? So some of us do at 0%, some of us do at 100%. I'm other that's at 50%. I was undecided. I don't really know. Uh, <laughs> I might sacrifice yeah. my family. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I annoy them all the time, but I don't think I sacrifice them. But I, I went away, right? And I thought that actually most people, it's the reverse. I think most, why do people work so hard? They actually work for their family. family right. They sacrifice themselves for their family. Uh-huh. And, and it's a good reminder for what because we deal with people's careers, right. that we have to build the right product. Uh, while making money is very important. Yeah. Uh, the product, you know, we have to take care of that career, right? Because they're counting on us to help them find that job. You, you got to remember what you're earning the money for. That's right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. And, and then people, you know, and all these hardworking Malaysians, I suppose you, you, we need to find a way to connect them to the right employee. Okay. So yeah. that was that was a thing for you, the growth wheel. and yeah. Any other uh, things that, you know, you got out of that? Uh, uh, definitely uh, business processes okay. need to be better. Uh, okay. when, when you're a young startup, you focus a lot on sales and marketing. That's yeah. normal because you yeah. need the revenue, yeah. you need the employees. Uh, but what, now when we try to scale, uh, it's a bit difficult if you don't have processes because mm. there's no system in place. Mm. So you don't really know exactly what, who's supposed to do what. Right. Yeah. Uh, so we we need to build that. And forever you'll be working in the business and not on the business. That's right. right? Yeah. Yeah. And for you, Ken, what, was your, what, was, what did you get out of the lessons? Actually, from the growth field training, <laughs> uh. after the training, then on, only I know what is our weak point and then where should we put in more effort to improve it. Okay. For example, in because we are selling the Tao Fufa, mm. so we, before the training, I never thought of so much of things I have to take care in my company. So after the training, I think operation and the marketing, we need to put in more effort mm. to make our company more, um, more organized. Okay. Yeah. So it's sales and marketing yes. and it's being more organized. Yes. Okay, so right now what are you doing in terms of sales and marketing? Mm, basically, now we are more into our products, research and development because we want okay. to develop more products. That's why that's why marketing and the operation, we didn't care about it. That's why now, we after the training, mm. then we have to focus back in our operation, marketing and in the same time to our product R&D. Right. So yeah. it is, of course, I guess a lot of your business has been B2B, business to business. So now yeah. you need to understand that yeah. you've got to make it exciting for the customers, yeah. for more uh, uh, potential distributors to come to you. Yes. Yes, okay. correct. What about presentation knockout? Before the trending, because I'm I'm very shy guy, so mm-hmm. I don't need to speak uh, speak in the public. Mm. So after the presentation knock up, I think I have learned many skills from there. So now I become more confident okay. to speak and more comfortable. Okay. So 
it's a big difference. Uh. Actually, I learned a lot from the training. Okay, so this whole, this whole, uh, what about just with the other classes as well, with you know, uh, strategic influencing and all that, what did you guys get out of it so far in terms of the coaching sessions? Actually, they got another training in the talent, 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 man- talent, yeah, management. talent management. I learned how to, because we, we got others partner in, mm. I, I mean, maybe in the future business or, or my current business, because we, we learned, we, Every peop- uh, every people we are different. Yeah. So after the training, we know how to communicate well, and then how to communicate with our employee is not not only the boss and employee. So mm. after the training, we know how to respect each other. Mm. So we know what they want. So we can communicate well. Right. Yeah. And Derek, you've got about you've got about ten employees now, or. Uh yes, you om- yeah, but almost ten okay. uh, full time. Right. So soon. what? So what is it like with talent management? The culture within Bob. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's still pretty good. I okay. suppose we are we're we not that big yet, yeah, right? Yeah. So it's very manageable. Still very family like. Yeah. Um, and everyone knows exactly more or less where their responsibilities are because there's like in marketing, there's one person in right. marketing, right? So everything in marketing falls under her. Um, so, uh, but with, with time management also, I learned something very interesting from a uh, Roshan session. Mm. And um, it has to, again, to do with processes and also people. Mm. So you ask the question, um, what kind of companies do better? People, uh, companies that focus on process or companies that focus on people? Mm. And it seems that it's the companies that pro- uh, focus on process that do better. Okay. Uh, and also, it, um, it also told the story of how uh, like Wayne Rooney was pushed, you know, when he was still oh, he, in the academy. He loves his football now. Yes. <laughs> you know, to remind us that uh, being a nice boss is not necessarily being a good boss, right? Okay. If, if you want your employees to grow, yeah. uh, you have to push them, you have to make them better, you have to force them uh, to see where, you know, to break new limits, mm. basically, and to get better and better all the time. Okay. Uh, and I think that's something that I took back and, you know, I went back to the office and I said, all right, guys, like, I'm going to push you from now on. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. That's what they told me. Yeah. Okay. All the best tomorrow. Okay. And also to see who's going to go back with uh, some good money. Um, and, you know, uh, I've been speaking to Ken Wom from uh, Lapo Recipe, the only representative from East Malaysia and director from Wom. This is Open for Business, BFM 89.9. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To find more great interviews, go to bfm.my or find us on iTunes.